Hello everyone and welcome to a nice little video based around some retro technology. I absolutely love doing these videos, but you guys may be a little bit confused because in the frame at the moment we have two devices that certainly are not retro. That's because I'm going to start by giving us a little run back through time to see where we are now in comparison to where we were 20, 30 years ago and how the technology has changed. This is not a pro video by any means, it's just going to be me ranting and rambling, but I hope you enjoy regardless. So in front of us here we have, first of all, a tablet. Now a tablet, it's a fairly new piece of technology. iPad came out in 2009 I believe and since then they've just kind of exploded within the last five years. There are absolutely tons on the market and pretty much everyone has used a tablet or at least seen one and loads and loads of people own them. Now they're a fantastic way to consume media on the go. They've got good battery lives, high quality displays, high quality audio output especially when using headphones and they're just extremely extremely convenient. Now, putting tablets aside, let's talk about smartphones. Even more people own smartphones. Often, they're even better and more portable because they just fit in your pocket. I can carry this guy around in my pocket, can't with this guy. I have to have a bag or, you know, dedicate my hand to carrying it around all day. But this guy, it can do pretty much all the things that this guy can, just on a slightly smaller scale. But it still has an extremely high quality display, extremely high quality audio, and I can consume a load of media on it. So whether that's media that I have stored on here myself, from my personal music library, my personal film library or TV show library, I can also stream any content that I want, whether that's through Spotify, which is a music streaming service, or Netflix, or Love Film, or whatever I choose to to use to stream videos and I can literally choose from thousands of songs, thousands of albums, thousands of TV shows and thousands of films to watch pretty much anywhere where I have a signal and even if I don't have a signal I can watch the stuff that I've already loaded onto the devices. So in my eyes we're definitely in a place at the moment where we can consume media wherever we want. Long train journey, doesn't matter. Load a film up on here or you know rent a film from iTunes or whatever even though neither of these are Apple devices come to think of it. But yeah, you can pretty much get through a long train journey, plane journey, bus journey or anything like that or you know a thing that you've got to wait for, waiting for a meeting or whatever. You can just listen to music, it's just convenient. Now, these are both very new devices. Let's talk a little bit older. Let's go back about a decade. What dominated before smartphones existed properly and before tablets existed properly? When they were just little rubbish ideas that were floating around and nobody could pull them off. Well, this guy existed. This is the Apple iPod. Now, the iPod still has, you know, a market share today. It's still, you know, being sold, but it's really, really you know, doing this. It's kind of dive bombing because these can do everything that this can and so much more. Now this is an example of the first ever iPod that could play video. This is actually called the iPod Video. Um, it's a 60 gigabyte unit. Oh, actually no, I've got the 80 gigabytes. It can hold 80 gigabytes of information, which is quite a lot of music and video for 10 years ago. Yeah, it wasn't the cheapest device on the market, but hey, still had a high quality display, granted a little smaller than what we're used to these days, but a high quality display, high quality, a very high quality DAC for audio output, especially through headphones. Well, only through headphones, no internal speaker in these guys. And of course, it was easily accessible and a lot of people used it. It caught on fantastic technology. Now, all of this, is easy technology. Now granted, with this, you can't stream services like you can with these. It doesn't have apps. You have to own all the content you put on there. You have to manually put it on there using iTunes through the computer or whatever, but it's still digital. It's still tiny. It still fits in your pocket. It's convenient. It has brilliant battery life. It's rechargeable. You don't have to put batteries in it. You know, even little things like that we take for granted these days. Now, let's move all of these devices over and talk about <laughs> a little something that uh, is fairly, fairly different, but actually not that old. If we think about the 10 year gap between the iPod and the tablet or whatever, 
Think about the 10 year gap between the iPod and the only option available beforehand. Enter this beast. The example I have right here is the Goodman's Quadro 900, which is a portable entertainment system like no other. Now, you can imagine when these kind of things came out, not just the Goodman's unit, because you know, loads and loads and loads of manufacturers and models were released. This just happens to be the one that my dad has lying around and uh, I, uh, he let me do a YouTube video on it. But just imagine when these came out or this kind of technology, look how small it is. TVs of the time were massive. You know, everything was huge. Radios were getting nice and small. Yeah, you could get small cassette players, but check this out. This is a TV, radio, and, uh, and cassette player in one. Now, essentially, this device is looking to achieve the exact same thing as this Apple iPod. It plays music and it plays video content. However, there's a big difference. The difference being that with this, nothing is internal. Nothing. The TV signal is analog. So with this, you choose what you want to put on it. If you fancy a film that you want to watch on the airplane, you put it on your iPod and you take it with you and you watch it, you enjoy it or you don't enjoy it depending on the film. With this, you have to watch what's on TV and that's probably just three or four channels. Now we don't have analog TV anymore so I can't show you this at all which is a big shame. However, we can look at some features of this nice little unit. Now, of course, if you wanted to listen to music on this thing, nothing internal again. You load MP3s or whatever file format you want onto this thing, but with this, you had to carry around cassette tapes. And of course, these take up extra space. Check this out, guys. Look at the size of a cassette tape. And look at the size of this iPod. The cassette tape is physically bigger than the entire iPod. And this is just one album. So. This is absolutely crazy. We, t we take technology for granted, but I just, wanna, I just really wanted to show this because it just demonstrates how much we've come on. Taking a closer look at the unit then, you can see we have an on and off switch. We have our selector switch for the function, so that can either be radio, cassette, or TV. Coming over, we have the selector switch for the radio. It does both AM and FM radio, which you can still use, of course. DAB hasn't quite taken off the same way as uh, digital TV. And then we have the volume slider, because this thing does have built-in speakers, of course. Coming up, we have the tuner section. These two dials tune in both the radio and the television independently. And then above that, we have a cassette deck, which is definitely an interestingly styled cassette deck. It's just like a car cassette deck. It uh, only does fast forward, and the tapes slide in from the front and then stick out slightly. Of course, the main feature that you see on this kind of unit is the screen. And yeah, we are talking something fairly tiny here. Let's take a look at my HTC. My HTC has a bigger screen, okay? So we're talking possibly, I'd say about a, if my HTC is, what, what is this phone? Five inches, 4.7 inches? I'd say this is probably about a 3.8 to four inch display, something like that. And uh, of course, it's a CRT display, very small one, and that makes the unit very deep. Now, as you guys can see, I actually have a power cable coming from this unit. You can plug it into mains power, but of course, it's portable. So let's take a look at how it's portable. Now, the first portable consumer electronics were made portable by one aspect. It didn't matter about battery life, it didn't matter about size, it didn't matter about performance. As long as it had a handle, you could advertise it as portable. This thing is huge. It doesn't fit in most backpacks, of course. You'd have to carry it around like so. And it's a CRT TV. It's got one hell of a weight to it. If I pick it up like so, it puts strain on my arm. But anyway, there are a few other things that make it portable. We have a collapsible, extendable antenna here, of course, so it does not need to be wired in to a coax connection to get its signal. You, it's got a built-in antenna for the TV and I assume also it's used for the radio as well. As mentioned, I've got this little beast hooked up via hard power, but of course it wouldn't be portable without its battery because we are comparing it to the Apple iPod. So, that's not to worry. Just put in 12 massive round batteries. Can't remember what those batteries are called, but uh, there's a nice little diagram on the cover 
just showing you which direction all 12 batteries have to go in. And I believe it's 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Actually, sorry, no, guys, it could be 9. So, yeah, not as bad as I originally thought. Sliding that back down, because we don't have any batteries in the unit. The one last thing that makes it truly portable is the independence that you have from everyone else. The anti-social aspect of portable technology that we face today, which is a problem that a lot of the older generation worry about. But uh, on this little unit, it is present also, and that is the uh, headphone jack. So you can uh, stick in your headphones. Fantastic. Let's take a little look at this beast in operation. So we've all seen portable radios and we've all seen Walkmans, cassette Walkmans. I mean, they're both pretty much a thing of the past now, but of course, the still the most remaining exciting thing on this unit, unfortunately, that we, we cannot use. Uh, let's turn it on and go over to TV. And as you will see any second now, there we go. There's the television display, all lit up. And if we tune it, we get nothing. We get a bit of noise, but analog television has been switched off. And it has been for a few years now, which is a shame. So we just get interference from other things, but we get no TV channels. It's not broadcast anymore. And that's a massive shame. It's pretty much, it, I find it a huge shame because there was nothing wrong with analog TV, but, this is the way it is, and all we get is this snow. So I believe this is a black and white tube in here. I'm pretty pretty much 100% sure. Um, but yeah, that's the TV portion. So, other than TV, of course, we have radio, which still works fantastically. Uh, the team are away at Kevin Druitt's uh, kickoff on... Don't expect... <laughs> Now, one thing that this has a massive advantage over, you know, devices like this, is this thing is big enough to incorporate some pretty hefty little speakers. We have one on this side, which looks to be about a three inch driver, which is massively significant in a portable piece of tech, and the same on that side. So two hefty speakers, and there really is a decent bit of noise to this little system. Now the radio tunes fantastically. I don't even have the aerial extended up, and check it out. That's pretty much crystal clear FM radio. Hey, Jacobo, Little bit of Welsh there, guys, for your uh, entertainment. Shan, isn't it? Yeah, Fionn. sounds good. <laughs> yeah, Shan. And of course, AM as well. It does have AM. AM's very weak around here. Not much knocking about on AM. Yeah, not much on there, but it still works. Now, of course, finally, we have the cassette uh, part of this, which, like I said, is pretty much just like a uh, a car cassette player. So you get your favorite Led Zepp tape and you stick it in. And uh, once you've stuck it in, this is what happens. So we get a nice sounding cassette playback from this. Now, what happens if we want to rewind back to the beginning of the song? Well, you have to eject the tape with a nice bit of force, flip it over to the other side, which of course it will begin playing the other side. We fast forward. Should be enough. Nah. 
out of practice, guys. It's fast forwarding extremely slowly, but I think that's my cassette. Anyway, there you go. We're back to the start of the track. Fast forward a bit. There we go. And of course, you want to skip your song, you just fast forward, wait a little bit, and uh, sort of hope for the best, really. Same song. And I mean, every cassette player had a different, different speed, so... It's all about guessing. Still the same track. There we go, different track. Now of course, let's say I'm now bored of Led Zeppelin for whatever reason, never happened, but still. We think, let's have a little change. And we take it out and uh, you know, on this kind of thing, we'd just scroll, find something else. But with this, if you didn't carry another cassette, you, you were knackered, you had that one cassette and uh, if you don't have any more cassettes and you want to change your music, then uh, you're going to have to rely on the radio. If you take the whole carcass and put it into a... So guys, I was eager to show another bit of retro tech on my channel. They're not my most popular videos by any means, but I love showing the odd bit of retro tech here and there. I've got more things on the way. I try and space them out, maybe a maximum of one retro tech video um, once every two weeks or something like that. But I got a, you know, a lot of these kind of things that I can make videos about. This was a nice little example because I thought it really ties in well with, um, you know, a lot of you tech heads out there that just, you know, are glued to these kind of devices. And, you know, a matter of even 20 years ago, 20 to 30 years ago, which isn't that much time really, because I'm 20 years old, this is what we had. Look at it. And it's a great piece of kit, but by no means is this convenient, you know? It's a, it's a lovely unit, it's great quality, but look at it. It's just, by today's standards, nowhere near. But anyway, this is why it's fun looking at the retro stuff because it's so interesting to see how far we've come. And I mean, a big staple in seeing the, uh, the popularity of internet TV and digital TV and stuff like that is the fact that they've actually turned off the analog television signal that's been going since, what, the 30s, the 20s, the 30s? You know, uh, slightly different, you know, I mean, that was 405 line back then or 403 or whatever it was, but... Uh, yeah, it's just, it's just very interesting to me, and I love this kind of thing. So, of course, this was an interesting little video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Um, please give me a feedback down in the comment section. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this retro piece of tech. And, of course, head down into the video description like always. Like I said, I don't do a lot of these videos, but it's still worth interacting with me on the various social networks, which is something that you also cannot do on this. No internet. No internet browsing, no social networking, can't post to Instagram from this. You can just watch three or four channels, or you could have done five years ago. Uh, play your cassettes as long as you remember to take them. And of course, uh, listen to your radio. One thing worth noting is there's no record functionality, functionality on this. It's just a playback cassette deck. So if you want to record your own cassettes from the radio, then you have to do that on a separate unit. Anyway, before I ramble on any longer, because I can talk about this kind of stuff for a very long time, I hope you guys have enjoyed, and I will catch you in tomorrow's video.